Captain Yadav is uh, busy on another webinar, uh, another meeting, a Zoom meeting. So the moment he finishes, he will be joining us. Uh, we are already 98 of us. Uh, the moment we touch 100, I think we'll start the meeting. <clears throat> right now, 99, sir. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, Captain Karanjika, should we go ahead and start now? We, we have crossed 100. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, good yes, afternoon, sir. gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the very first webinar being conducted by FOSMA Maritime Institute of Kolkata. The topic of the webinar, pilot ladder safety during a pilot transfer operation. It is a very relevant one considering a series of recent accidents witnessed during pilot transfer operations. Uh, we are pleased to have with us Captain Gajanan Karanjikar, President of All India Marine Pilots Association, and Captain Sanjeev Pade, Senior Pilot at The Hage. Captain Karanjikar will introduce us to the subject, and Captain Pade will give us a presentation on the pilot ladder safety. As the audience, we have students from the Institute attending nautical competency courses uh, and uh, of course the nautical faculty. Uh, we also have our visiting nautical faculty attending the webinar and the topic is even more relevant to them since most of them are sailing masters and they probably see this all the time. Uh, Captain Ali Dagman would be the moderator for the uh, entire meeting. Uh, I will now hand over the mic to Captain Karanjika uh, to start uh, the meeting itself. Over to you, Captain Karanjika. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Captain Gulacha, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I see a lot of uh, senior dignitaries uh, present for this lecture or webinar. I'm very pleased to, you know, and humbled to arrange uh, uh, from the AMPA side this, this uh, kind of effort that we have launched in to bring in the awareness about pilot ladder safety and pilot transfer procedure. Of course, pilot ladder is the element of pilot transfer procedure. And we want to emphasize on this because uh, the students attending this program from the MTIs are essentially the people who are directly involved with the pilot ladder on board vessel. AMPA is a All India Maritime Pilots Association in India with primary motto of safety and security of pilots. And we also look after the navigation and safety of safety in port as well as harbor front matters. I'm very pleased to uh, deliver this uh, kind of a special lecture to the students of MTI because there has been a lot of mishaps of pilot ladder. I mean, more of the crew members have died than the pilots so far on the pilot ladder mishaps. But the, since the pilot ladder, the nomenclature is of pilot ladder, it becomes the responsibility of pilot to check and, you know, and correct it. And it's very ironical that every time a pilot boards, a pilot wants to board a vessel, he has to go to the pilot ladder, stand under it, and decide whether he has to board or not. Nowhere in the world in any job this happens. And unfortunately, to his bad luck, the pilot ladder is not secured properly, not maintained properly or it is not correct. His own life is at danger of by his own decision. And this is very ironic. My heart bleeds when I, when I always think of a pilot accident and the pilot has taken a call of boarding the vessel. We don't have a system in place where, where the pilot ladder can be called as a workplace safety hazard. The efforts of AMPA are on the way to do this with the Ministry of Law and Justice. Anyway, Coming back to today's topic, uh, setting the tone of this lecture, AMPA started this campaign of creating awareness in MTI students, officers, seamen, 
beat candidates, mates candidates, masters candidates, is to is to make them aware as this is a very potential hazardous equipment on board where somebody's life can be in danger if the pilot ladder is not taken care of. Them. Pilot ladder is already a part of the safety equipment survey form E. Class survey is supposed to inspect it every at annual survey. The shift stop is supposed to maintain that it belongs to the shift stop, but the entire process of pilot transfer arrangement belongs to the port. So there is a tremendous gap between the responsibilities of handling a pilot, you know, onto the vessel where pilot is employed by the port service, services the vessel. So, so idea is to you know. Uh, the empire decided to get the pilots to train because they are the only best people to train the subject. MTIs, instructors, professors have limitations of time and, of course, knowledge and practicalness. Pilot ladder. So, Captain Pandey is here today. He is a very senior pilot, and he has volunteered himself to to train you guys with with respect to the pilot ladder, do's and don'ts, dangers involved in pilot ladder, what could the best best practices. There is a whole lot of movement going in the world, and we can't just say the Indian the Indian seafarers should be taught. So, I, of course, AMPA can't reach the entire world, but AMPA has decided to reach every one of the students in MTIs. We have last time in the first spell of lectures, we reached 2,500 students in MTIs, and this is the first time we are doing with Fosma Calcutta. I'm very thankful to the faculty of uh, Fosma Calcutta as, as well as Captain Mahesh Yadav. Who initiated this, and of course, uh, for this webinar, you know, Captain Ali Dagman, who's going to moderate the event. Introduce briefly Captain Pandey. Captain Pandey has, you know, we are 73-75 batch Ryan the cadet, and he got his command in 1989. He came ashore to work in 2001. He also been a lecturer in Tolani Maritime, you know, in, in Pune, in 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 uh, and thereafter. He took up to the pilot age. I mean, you know, to be a pilot, you need to have a passion. You need to have a liking towards ship handling, ship maneuvering, and that too in congested waters. And this is how he became pilot. He's at the moment pilot in age. Before that, he was a pilot in Pipawa port for 10 years. And there he was involved in many initiatives with respect to pilot age and navigability of waters and things like that. So you have an instructor with, her, with you. We are senior master mariner instructor and also a senior pilot who's going to impart you the first hand knowledge about the pilot ladder, pilot ladder safety. I would request everyone to give uh, undivided attention to this lecture and ask whatever relevant questions you can at the end, whatever is possible, Captain Pandey and myself will, will uh, attempt to answer the questions. We don't know everything again, but, but I would request you to take away the very safety element from this lecture and, and do us instructed on board to save somebody's life. Thank you very much. Captain Manocha again, over to Captain Ali Dagman for the, for the moderation of the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Gajanan Karan, Karanikar. This was a great pleasure to host the AMPA this afternoon. Well, I would say just to begin with, it's a burning issue, the transfer of pallet where everybody could see the flame, but very few to douse the flame. Thank you, Captain Karanjika, to take this effort. And uh, gentlemen, we are honored to be with Captain Karanjika today because he's not only the president of All India Marine Pilot Association, he is a visiting faculty of the Indian Institute of Management on warehousing and logistic management. He's a member of the Harvard Business Review Advisory Council, USA. He's also a member of the Confederation of Indian Industry Steering Committee, basically with port businesses, blue economy, social activities, writer, executive coach, guest speaker, metamorphosis leader. Well done, Captain. Thank you for being with us because I'm sure the students of Fosma Maritime Institute will get a right hand uh, or the direct information for safety of pilots on board, which is of importance and very big concern. So without any further delay, I would request uh, Captain Sanjeev Pandey, who has been well introduced by 
uh, Captain Karanji Kar here, and to add on to it that he's also ex India, where we belong to also, Captain uh, Pandey. I was also a Sindhya cadet, Captain Himadri Ray also, our vice principal from Sindhya's. So <laughs> it's back home, and I feel that you will just do justice to this presentation. We welcome on board uh, Captain uh, Sanjeev Pandey for his views on the safety of pallets and the rigging of pallet ladders to make it safe for all pallets around India, and hopefully it will reach the uh, globally also. Please come. Uh, thank you, Captain Dakman. And uh, thank you, Captain Manocha, Captain Karanjika, for all the glowing uh, introduction. And without much ado, let's start the lecture. I will start my sharing the screen. You can all hear me? Just confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we will start with a small video, just to orient everybody, a few videos, then we'll get on to the actual presentation. Here it is. Let's start with some indoor checks while the bosun lays out the pilot ladder for inspection. Let's see if the pilot ladder is certified. If you have a second pilot ladder, make sure that it is certified as well. There you go. As long as you're there, few more things to check. Check the planned maintenance system. When was it uh, put into use? Check that you have an inventory maintained for the record of pilot ladders. If the pilot ladder was ever repaired, check how it was done and when. Make sure that it was inspected by class. Now this is a tricky question. Where would you get this information? When was it inspected by class? Well, pilot ladder is part of your safety equipment certificate. The last SEQ certificate inspection date is when it was last inspected by class. There you go, that's the date we are looking for. Now that we have finished the indoor checks, let's go on deck and inspect the ladder. Carry out your physical inspection of the ladder. It should all be in clean condition. Inspect the side ropes and the wedges. There should not be any missing wedges. The side rope should have a firm grip. Make sure it is in order. That's a bad example. Should not be like that. Let's inspect the steps now. The steps should be clean. They should not be painted. They should all have non-slip surface. Including the rubber steps. Check the condition of the rubber steps that they are not cracked. Once again, they should be clean, firmly fixed. Spacing should be even. Look at that, a broken and cracked step. Make sure you don't have that. I'll just pause a second. The idea of showing all this is also to see that this kind of work procedure which they're following is showing in the video. You look forward that this is actually implemented on board ships. That's a very shabby ladder which could come off at any point. Make sure that the side of the ladder is marked with heights along the length. There you can see 6 meters, 5 meters, 4 meters and so on. We're going to inspect the spreaders now. Check the condition of the spreaders. There should not be any cracks. Should be firmly fixed. Spacing should be even. Let me show you an example of a very very badly fixed spreader that's really dangerous. 
So this is the marking which relates your ladder with the certificate. It should be clearly marked. The pad eyes on deck should be color coded with SWL, unlike this one which has no markings at all. The pilot axis should be firmly marked on deck in clean condition. The duty officer must be checking this, unlike this one. The pilot ladder must be marked with tags for easy identification with your PMS. The length of the ladder should be enough to reach the waterline in any condition. Now that we have finished with the static checks, we are going to go for the rigging of the ladder. Let's rig it up. The rigging of the ladder must be done safely under supervision of a responsible officer. The ladder must be made fast on deck, firmly, using the pad eyes on deck, using strong shackles. There should be a life buoy next to it with a line and a light, but the line should not be connected to the buoy. It should be firmly resting on the ship side with all the steps touching the ship side and the area should be free of discharges. Look at that ladder, it's a very poor rigging, none of the steps are touching the ship side. If there is a tripping line, there's a right way to connect it. It should not be fastened to the bottom part of the ladder below the spreader. It should always be above the spreader level. The illumination of the area should be adequate, which is usually provided by the deck lights, especially the search light on the bridge wings. People rigging should be wearing proper personal protective equipment, including safety harness, life jackets where necessary. The pilot ladder should be firmly fastened to the ship side. You can see there's a magnetic clip over here. There can be other system to fasten it. That's a very, very wrongly rigged ladder that can come apart any moment. Now the height above the waterline must be suited to the pilot's requirements and it should never be touching the water. The pilot access should be checked by the duty officer after rigging. There should be a safe access for the pilot to come up. That's an example of a very, very unsafe access. It should not be this way. If you are connecting man ropes as required by the pilots, they should be between 28 to 32 mm manila ropes only. Let's go for rigging a combination ladder and see what are the precautions to be taken over there. Now, if the freeboard of the ship is more than nine meters, a combination ladder must be used. A single pilot ladder should not be used. Anyone who's involved in rigging of the combination ladder should always be wearing safety harness and life jackets. Proper PPE should be worn. Now some ships are using a fall preventer device attached with a harness. This is extremely useful and uh, increases the safety. The angle of inclination of the gangway should not be more than 45 degrees. That's the inclinometer of the gangway as you can see. The gangway or accommodation ladder should always be leading aft of the ship. It should also be connected firmly, attached to the ship side. The pilot's climb is expected to be between 1.5 to 9 meters, not less than 1.5, not more than 9 meters. And the pilot must be escorted to the bridge when he arrives. So now we'll go on to a few dramatic videos and then we'll start a presentation. Here's a pilot boarding during very heavy weather. It's quite common in European waters and of course on the where it's very stormy all the time, very often. Here it is. It's a matter of skill and timing. And also the pilot is putting his life on the line, he assumed that perfectly rigged ladder is available to him.
I like the kind of arrangement they have on this pilot boat. Rather than stepping off on the deck of the boat, on this platform, it's in help of trapping area. And the ladder can fall with the pilot boat. Well, it's very clear of that. There he goes. Be successful. Things can go wrong very fast. As you see in the next one. Something similar. Let's see what happens. He doesn't get it right and he's in the water. It happens in a flash. The life boy is being thrown. It's not, not attached to a heaving line. You can see why. So you can reach the pilot. If you attach a heaving line to the life boy and keep it there, it becomes a nuisance. Line is used when to when the boy has reached the pilot, then to bring him back, give him the line. Now let's go to the presentation. After the presentation is over, I'll show you one more video, which sort of highlight what we've talked about. But can you see this uh, presentation slides? Yes, we can. Okay. So why this lecture? Actually, Captain uh, Karanjikar has already given us a good idea, but still, here we go. We've had a lot of repeated kind of uh, deficiencies. So the only way to get rid of them is to educate because mostly points to lack of awareness of what should be done correctly, what the correct procedures are. And it's not just me saying it. It is the International Maritime Pilot Pilots Association. And it is based on a proper study. For the last six, seven years, they've done uh, huge surveys of various uh, pilot districts, mostly in the major maritime commerce areas. And they found a 20% rate of deficient ladders. Too high, too high. Best practices. Lack of awareness of the best practices. So a lot of work is going on amongst very seasoned pilots and we come up with a certain best practice we will talk about today, emphasize today. So the issues which from my experience as a pilot, that's what I've been talking about. I won't talk about technical specifications, uh, specific details of rules and regulations. You all are quite uh, well-versed, I would assume, or you should be. So uh, we will talk about the practical aspects as to why these deficiencies arise in the first place. The first cause of concern is, area of concern is improper securing. And then bringing ladder excessively lower than what the pilot has asked for. Then there are those dangers of doing transfers on when your ships of low freeboard. That is when uh, the climb is less than one and a half meters. And then there are facts and of the deficiency which you notice and we should talk about regarding combination ladders. And then other matters too, which from my experience, I would like to share with you. So a pilot ladder exists as a system a system is made up of a chain of different regulations and recommendations. Then they have to comply with a certain standard and all together they have to implement it by a set of good procedures. So anything in this chain which is weak, the system will fail. SOLAS is a regulation, IMO has a recommendation both of them incorporate the standard, the ISO standard for manufacturing and design and manufacture of, of a pilot ladder. And then you have the overarching ISO code, which in one way or the other incorporates all these three, as well as requires you to observe best practice where there is no specific regulation.
So the regulations specify how a ladder, when it is rigged at its full length, that is supplied length, how that is to be secured. Means the supplied length of the ladder, the top of the ladder is, is made up with thimble eyes, and then you have shackles, and you're supposed to attach the ladder to the ship's strong points using these shackles, and then pay out the ladder. But then, obviously, that length of ladder won't suit your current three board, nor the height requirement above water level of the pilot. So then you have to adjust the ladder to a different length, and that's what we call the intermediate length. And the regulations, surprisingly, don't specify how these ladders are to be shortened to intermediate length and secured to the ship. The problem lies here. So seafarers are very creative. What kind of practices have come about? They look good. They are very convenient, but they are deadly for the pilots very soon. Either they're deadly for the pilots or they damage the ladder. They damage the ladder so rapidly or so thoroughly that you cannot use that ladder. Earlier, it was allowed that you could repair your ladder on board by a ship screw. They had the seamanship skills. And the regulations also permitted, but now no longer. You have to have, if the ladder is not fit, you have to replace it. You cannot repair it. You are at the most allowed to replace two steps if they are broken and cracked. That too using approved replacement steps. If more than two steps are damaged, the ladder has to be replaced. So if you secure it wrongly, or you rig it wrongly, you will damage the ladder you will make it unfit, and the next port you won't have a ladder. Very expensive can be for your owners if you have been asked to wait for a fire ladder before you can embark your pilot. So what are these creative practices which the seafarers have come about? What kind of innovative solutions? On some of these ships, you can have what you call the deck bracket or the tongue. This is just a L-shaped piece of um, angle iron welded to the deck. So you can just jam the spreader, your, your step on this and remaining ladder over the side and very quickly it is ready. But this is not good. All the sprain and stress is going to come on the fixtures which are not designed to carry the load. Dangerous. Here also basically unsecured one splash of the wave and it gets dislodged. Another one, making fast to undesignated points on the ship. The ship's railing is not strong enough not to do. Here they just shown a small ship even on large ship, people do this. On the right hand side, this is the crux of the problem. The worst, the, it looks safe. It can stand quite a load, but it damages your ropes very fast. Very within one use, you'll find you will render your rope, your ladder unfit for use. Remember, this rope is damaged, you have to condemn the whole ladder. You cannot replace it. You don't want to be asking the office to supply your ladder every month. It look ridiculous. You have to instead use better practices. Here another innovation. This is a platform to avoid, uh, the, to give a clear footing for the pilot. But then the pilot investigated and he found that the ladder wasn't secured. They just use the locking pins of this platform to serve as a securing means. Not good. Creative, very creative. Seamen are very creative. They have to be from the job, but certain jobs, certain things you cannot be creative. You have to think it through. Here's a crossbar, same thing. The weight comes on the step and fixtures. They're not designed to take the load, not safe. Over here, you have the spreader jammed against the railings. And people thought, oh, for extra safety, I put two shackles too. <laughs> Together, it's still unsafe. First, the spreader will break, and afterwards, the shackle gets straining on the rope, and that will also jam your rope and damage it. So what do we do? To secure at intermediate lengths, you should use a rolling hitch. This is the current best symmetry practice. It takes into consideration that the side ropes of the pilot ladder are the primary weight bearing part. 
So using this kind of method, the forces acting on the ladder are borne by the strongest part of the ladder. That's the side ropes, which have a minimum breaking load of about 24 kilo newtons, roughly 2.4 tons. Whereas the steps with the fixtures are proof load tested to just 8.8 .8 kilo newtons, 900 kg. While it doesn't weigh 900 kg, it's about 90 kilos, 100 kilos at the most. But there are what you call impulse forces, jerks. So for that reason, they test it to 900 kg. So this method is the least harmful and the most effective. Your ladder will not damage the side ropes, but shackles will. Also, crossbars, tongues, brackets should not be used because especially shackles, they damage the side ropes very quickly besides damaging the fixtures and the chocks. Fixtures are the chocks, the wedge-shaped chocks, which are used, they are tied up, which uh, secure the steps horizontal, and uh, either they are clamped or they are seized. Forces much greater than 8.8 .8 kilonewtons, which are the proof load tests of the steps and fixtures, uh, can be exerted on the ladder. Those are the ones which cause the side ropes to part. Now to part a side rope, it has to be strained to an exceeding its 2.4 metric ton breaking load. And where can that force come from? It comes when part of the weight of the pilot boat itself transfers onto the ladder. When the ladder gets jammed between the ship side and the pilot boat, and in the waves, the pilot boat tosses up and down. So the jamming force it acts on the ladder downwards on the side ropes, and that's where the ladder can get really affect badly damaged, damaged, or it can broke and part. I doubt whether 2.4 tons force will come. We know nobody knows, but it, that's a hell of a lot of force. The steps and fixtures, no way can they withstand that force. So, when will the ladder get jammed? When it is rigged too long, this is the second issue which I'll be talking about in detail. And lastly, and not the least, never secure to undesignated points like railings, the nearest air pipe you can find, or the nearest pipeline you can find. No, should not. So, how does this method? What does it really? What does it need? Very simple uh, apparatus. Just two lengths of rope, about the same size and, and at least the same, uh, same or a little bit more uh, breaking load than the side ropes. Made into a strop, that is a, a, a thimble line on one end, and you can keep two ded dedicated shackles so that you have like a kit. All this should be certified. Your ladder certified, and so sure, sure should all these. And because they are meant only for pilot ladder securing, nothing else, so they should be uh, stored away safely. So this is why they made portable. There is no harm in using uh, just open ropes, but one few after few uses, this rope, which are when you are tying directly onto the strong point, those knots which you tie, those also can damage that rope. And you have to keep discarding these ropes often. Uh, finding certificates and maintaining a track record, all that becomes complicated. Better to go for this. Designated strong points is the key word. Certified shackles. Nowadays, everything requires a paper trail. The rope also required to be certified. And they shouldn't be used for any other purpose. If they use for some other purpose, they don't know what load they've been subjected to, what damage they've been to, uh, how many times they've been used, they can wear out. So this is part of the pilot ladder, not anything else. So here is what it looks like, the rolling hitch method. The left hand side is the finished rolling hitch. The other end is that maybe that's prop with a shackle, which is uh, shackled onto the dedicated strong points. Here, one, two, three, four, very quick, very easy to learn this rolling hitch. 
within uh, our community can learn it left hand lay uh, and right hand lay in this uh, other photograph here they use they are not use dedicated stops chalega initially before if you don't have them and go on board you can use this but quickly get the dedicated stops made get the certification the check on everything ready and then you're set to go every time use the rolling edge method for intermediate lengths make sure the length which you try are, are uh, tight all the slack is taken up and that the equal the unequal that means the ladder is slanted that's also an unsafe ladder somebody should put a step on this if once you and give it a good two three uh, heavy stamps on it to make sure that it is not slipping and rather gripping properly and the length is correct so now we come to the main cause to why ladder steps and fixtures can get damaged is because they are rigged too long the typical practice which has happened is so which i have seen in my career is that they use that go to line called the tripping line when the crew is told go rig the ladder and how high the boatswain asks the boatswain will tell the boatswain okay 2 meters over water level and he will allow his own estimate what is 2 meters don't uh, really uh, think too much and then they just for extra uh, safety they just put two steps lower and in case the, the pilot finds it too long all we can have to do is pull on the stripping line and pull up the lower end so it forms a bite and then the pilot boat can come alongside and once it's alongside then we drop that uh, ease on the stripping line and uh, there you have a nice ladder for the pilot not not good at all that extra loop of steps is going to foul and catch with some fixtures on the pilot boat and snag and in the wave action bring the whole contraption down in one jerk the whole ladder come down entire weight of the boat will come on this and be brought down or god forbid while the pilot is climbing the pilot also brought down with all the ladder extremely dangerous that is just the bad part the worst the other part is we have a long ladder like this while you're if you're not careful if you don't not careful you can easily get caught like in the shown in the picture between the pilot boat fender and the ship side and here i've i've drawn an arrow called the bump force and i've resolved it into horizontal force and then there's a vertical component vertical component there's a vertical component of the bump force now this is much much more than the 8.8 kilo newtons okay and it won't act equally on both the ropes very rarely you find the port side here angle it will grab either one of the two side ropes will grab and act i won't be a steady squeeze it will be one sharp jerk and stop and like a sharp jerk and stop in that jerk you'll find that is if you use shackles over here and the next picture will show it will wrench them open and when the pilot poor fellow is climbing up he'll find the ladder paying out one or two one or one step or so that jerk will dislodge him and fall in the water if if the pilot already climb before he, before he can climb or disembark if it already happened or we bring back the ladder on board you'll find that this texture or over here somewhere has been damaged badly and you'll discover it maybe on sailing time or next port when you do your pre pre rigging inspection you find the ladder is unfit for use not good you have to be replaces such a ladder so this is how it comes on the top the ladder in this case made fast with two shackles the bump force acts it acts maybe on this rope and not the other one so when the jerk occurs what happens at this pain point the fixture is restrained but then this one rips open this seizing rips open and this rope comes out and this is what it looks like afterwards in this jerk the ladder becomes slanted here like you see becomes slanted and a jerk has also come and the pilot if he was on the ladder he could fall with such a sharp jerk and then you have a permanently damaged ladder this is what happens very quick it can happen all because you rigged it too long good ladder a ladder you know just because you rigged it too long this is what happens you can't repair this only steps you can replace you cannot repair the fixtures 
You cannot do the seizing. You have to replace the whole ladder. So how do you rig this to the correct length? So they have now approved ladders. All ladders, in fact, are required to be marked. At every one meter interval, they are fixed marked. So you can make out if you use it, this 12 meter mark is at level with your deck edge. And so that means you got 12 meters out over the side. So in this example, you are asked to rig a ladder four meter water level. Free board is 12. So 12 minus four is eight. You have to pay out eight meters. That means the eight meter mark should be at your point from where you measure downwards to the lowermost step. So this is for a straightforward case of uh, a pirate ladder where it's rigged from the deck. But sometimes the ladders are hung underneath the trapdoor arrangement of a combination ladder. So in that case, since the whole thing goes up and down, then you want to know at what angle should the gangway be kept so that the lowermost step is the desired height. Well, then you have to have a specially devised procedure worked out. If it's not there, you should work it out and incorporate it as an amendment in your, into your SMS. Or if you're not, you don't, you can't do it, get it done from a show. Describe what the problem is and they will see at what particular angle of uh, inclination the gangway and your, on your ladder is. So accordingly, what angle you have to keep it. Then only you will be right. Otherwise, you're going to have a very dangerous thing that your ladder suspended under your trap door kind of a platform and it's stick too long and the pirate ladder, pirate boat jumps, jams it, jumps it. And you can imagine the whole weight of the boat is acting on the whole falls of that uh, trap door arrangement and the whole thing comes crashing down. Enormous problems. Definitely fatalities. So these markings make good use. Train your crew. Once you're satisfied that they know how to do it, then you can tell them, okay, you know how to do it and go and rig it. But then make sure a responsible officer checks. That's what a responsible officer means. He has to check that this height of water level is actually what is required. And to rule out any estimation, guesstimation, use precise measurements. Know the freeboard at the point at which you want to rig it and use the marking of the ladder and get it right. If it's about half one step or one and a half steps short, it's fine. But long is dangerous. If it's short, the pilot doesn't use the lowermost step. You never use the lowermost step to transfer from the boat. You use the step above, or maybe sometimes the second step above also. The tripping line is not for shortening the ladder, as I said, it's for only purpose is to retrieve the ladder, only if it's very long, it cannot be retrieved by hand over hand, you have to use it to take the weight off, to help the crew, fine, you can use this. But only for retrieving the ladder, not for shortening it. It should lead forward, so they don't foul the boat, and it should be made fast at or slightly above the lowermost ladder, not lower than that. Okay. Kept reasonably tight. Not too slack. So this is what damage is caused. This is not caused by the pilot. His weight won't cause this kind of slanting. It's the pilot boat acting on the pump force. And that's the sequence of events which lead up to such kind of damage. This is also bump force damage. This is an extreme case where of course, the ladder rope is quite rotten. Probably they use shackles too often, or also the jerk from the pilot boat and given one side broken. As I said, the act, force acts mostly on one side. One side here, one side there, one side here. Low free boats. This is also a, a tricky problem. You might say, oh, what's so hard about that? Not even a ladder is required. You just have to step across. So this is what the pilot unfortunately did. It's not as, as if the ship is always at fault. Sometimes, quite often, pilots also at fault. So, this is to educate everybody. These lectures are also useful pilots, I would say that. So, in this case, this accident which occurred in London, the pilot, he thought, oh, just two feet. He stepped across from a bobbing ship. This is a small ship. 
and on the small pilot, this pilot boat, not much of a difference. Eight, eight, eight hundred millimeters, two feet, quite a lot actually, just to pop off. Maybe at that moment the boat dipped a little bit, or whatever. He tripped and he fell, and then he died. Instead, what they should have done is they should have used this so that this animated kind of pilot as they're drawn. So you and they should have a bulwark ladder, of course. Come up. He, when he comes up to the top, he uses his conscience, turns his back, and he steps down this way. So all the time he's got three point contact. And then when he is very certain that he, he can come onto the deck of the pilot boat, then he lets go. Otherwise, he's always got two hands holding something. So you have to be, these kind of arrangements on these small ships have to be thought through. They are not given detailed specifications how it's to be done. The regulations don't cover the boarding, the transfer, where the climb is less than one and a half meters. I use the word climb. This climb is a very confusing word. It's part of the regular solas, they use climb. Sometimes they use fall, and sometimes they use uh, height. So we will clarify what this means in different contexts. But there's only one thing which matters, and I will tell you what it is. Here it is, another one. He's using a ladder here. But then you see there is no man rope rigged. He should have got a man rope rigged here so that he could hold at this height that is above his center of gravity. Right now his hands are at his center of gravity, very, very unstable. He's now a toppling couple and he can easily fall in the water. So these are all tricky. Just to let you know, this is all food for thought. Nobody can impose some specific do's and don'ts. But then, out of experience, we can tell you that these are very dangerous things. And you will be very careful when you're low freeboard. Some of you may have the good fortune, I would say, not misfortune, good fortune to go and work on small ships. It's a different ball game over there. Then the waves are very lively. So uh, on these small ships, not only the on big ships is easy, the, only the pilot boat is bobbing around. But in small ships, both are moving independently. Very, very tricky. So I was mentioning about what is the criteria for rigging a combination. You might say, well, if the freeboard of the ship says 12 meters and the pilot asks ladder to be four meters above water, so eight, 12, uh, 12 minus four is eight, the pilot has to climb only eight meters. So then you look at the vaguely remember oh, something about nine meters being the criteria at which you decide whether to rig a combination or not. So somebody might think, well, it's only eight meters climb, so no need for a combination. That person is wrong. Why? Okay, suppose you didn't ring a combination, you ring the plane ladder. Okay, he's climbing up. He already got the advantage of a big, fat, uh, tall pilot boat, so four meters up already is from above the water. So he starts climbing up, eight meters, he reaches on top. Just about at the top, he falls. And he hits the water. From what height he's going to fall? He's going to height not from eight meters. He's going to fall from a height of twelve meters. So it is the fall which counts, not the climb at which he how much he's made to climb. It's the fall. So from the point of access to the water, if that is more than nine meters, it has to be a combination ladder. A one meter fall, height from one meter fall. I can hit the whatever it is, it's 16 kilometers an hour. So that kind of a rate, you will have a real solid blow on your lungs. And at nine meters, at 48 kilometers an hour, it's like as well as falling on concrete, lethal. At eight meters, they expect pilots or people not to die, maybe sustain injuries, but not die. But nine is some, I don't know on what basis. Of course, there is some basis. They must have found some studies somewhere. So nine meters is the limit. The most, at the most limit, the stretch at the most. So let's move on from securing and onwards. Now let's go to combinations. There are some very sore points which I will talk about. I won't talk about full details. We will just go through it fast. You all are quite experienced people. I'll just highlight the main things. The first picture, common mistake, platform covering part of the ladder. The requirement says it should be close, about 10 to 20 centimeters away. Gap should be there. So a pilot coming up here, 
you will not be able to get onto the platform not good here it looks good the tripping line is rigged the wrong side plus it's the wrong point it should be somewhere here here this point and leading forward this one the ladder has to be secured one and a half meters to the above the lower platform why see the next picture when he climbing up he needs to hold on to the ladder he goes up only when his feet are in level of the lower platform then he can transform so till then the ladder must be firm in his hand so it has to be secured at least one and a half meters or at one and a half meters above the lower platform it's specified in the poster the rigging poster so a good example both of them <coughs> forward, forward. And here you have the secured one and a half meter above platform, and lower platform also independently secured. The right hand side, I think the gangway is too steep, but I don't know. Maybe the photograph aspect makes it appear so. So it's supposed to be a good reading. Then we have other contraptions on some ships to accommodate uh, different kind of. deck cargo arrangements especially on these large uh, container ships they want uh, all the bays are on deck to be either for cargo not for pirate ladders so they use winch reels and and hull doors so we have winch reel in this one like a recess recess winch reel here on the hull door so here in this poster which is taken from a poster the main thing is that this rope should be secured to paradise here actually they are not paradise they look just like Uh, like guides, and then the rope is going up, not secured. Uh, this is a mistake in the poster. We need to be corrected. Uh, Ari Palmer's pilot is working on this. They're trying to work on this. But basically, this winch should not be wearing, uh, taking the weight of the uh, forces acting on the ladder. They should be transmitted to designated securing points. This is also not not correct. They should be secured. <laughs> not directly to the winch this is to be amended here they secured it to the point on the ship but they used shackles as we just learned this is not right instead you should have used that those dedicated straps shackle the thimble of that strap onto this and then apply a rolling hitch over here both sides Tight and then equal, and that should do it. And this winch itself should be locked. If it's a mechanical winch, put a pin. And if it's a power-driven winch, that should be safely locked. Uh, inadvertently, you don't start operating it. The winch is rolling around. Same thing in the right-hand picture. It does not mean secure. It just means reeved onto this hook, kind of a lead, and weight is going directly onto the winch. Not good. Again, we should have used those dedicated straps, shackle them onto here, and put rolling edges. All those, another kind of device uh, modification to accommodate large ships with huge uh, big boats, container ships especially, and even row rows, car carriers. So again, some of them have this recess winch, so this should not be. No weight should come on this. This is not correct. See the how it looks in the actual photograph. In this case, it's gone up to the winch wheel or is on deck. So I suppose it's secured properly with the shackle and strap, and then hung over the side. But here is a flaw. It's secured only on one side, and that too, which I mean. One and a half meters above this platform over there, so you see only one side. Can you imagine now? Pilot tries to come up, he holds this, this, this portion is going to flip over, and he's going to turn around, twist. He won't be able to go on this smoothly. The climb for the ladder should be smooth. There should be no hindrances, no hiccups. We have hiccups. Chance of falling down exists much more, much more possible. 
no slanting steps, no uneven steps, no different kinds of grips and so on. Like I'm talking about different kinds of grips. You have these trap doors, window makers, they call them in the USA. The issue with this is this. Like a smooth climb you hear so far, okay, fine, fine. But when you come up to this place, you have a huge fat angle, channel bar over here. And then you have pipes, horizontal pipe, metal ones, slippery, uh, very hard to grip. The best grip you have is when you hold on to a rope vertically, not when you hold on to a pipe horizontally. You, you try it out, you will hang on with much larger weights on the, using this kind of a grip than on a horizontal bar. This is not right. This is correct. The ladder should have been continued further up. They made a proper sort of a adaptation and the ladder hung out here so he can climb up properly and keep getting a good grip all the way before he transfers onto the gangway. So, pilot is happy here, he's smiling. And this whole contraption should be secured to the ship side. Otherwise, the shump ships, in which they don't secure it, the whole thing, along with the, along with the ladder, the whole thing tends to move around, roll around along with the ship. Very, very dangerous. This should be secured. It has to be secured. It doesn't seem to be secured here. They have to use magnets. There are no sockets here, but they have to use magnets. And it should be clear, it's just procedure, safety and operating procedures. So this is a good good uh, kind of arrangement. It's made a U-shaped uh, improvisation. And the ladder has gone further up. This is how it should be. Uh, sir, you are unmuted. Uh, no, he's not muted. He's got muted. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud okay. and clear. So, here you find the ladder is secured, but the platform, I don't see it secured to the ship side. In rolling, the whole platform can move back in, uh, in and out. Very dangerous. So, this platform also should be, maybe in the photograph, it can't be seen. But somewhere, I hope, I assume it's secured. If it's not, then the ship has to change its procedures, has to find a way of securing this lower platform also. So now we come to some associated equipment. Talking about the bulwark ladder. The main thing, there's an amendment which come out to the requirement, the SOLAS regulation, by a circular resolution. Um, Basically, it says, it clarifies that the stanchions and the bulwark ladder must be independent of each other. It should not be, the stanchions should not be part of the bulwark ladder. That's what it says. And the stanchion must extend 1.2 meters above the top of the bulwark. Rigidly secured at the lower end as well as one point somewhere midway through. So, here's some food for thought. You have a ship regularly calling. I had a ship regularly calling uh, shuttle service in Mumbai and Pipao. And uh, we had an issue of, you know, the not meeting. Uh, this is one sort of a point where your draft and ballast was too uh, low and the freeboard near the pilot ladder when you rigged it over the bulwark was uh, more than nine meters. Uh, and to get it compliant, either we had to have a combination or you had to take a ballast. Now the ship didn't, she was a small ship, didn't have a combination arrangement. So we had to take ballast. So that is very inconvenient for operational considerations. So what we did was we cut a gate in the bulwark and with that, the effective freeboard reduced by over one meter at the boarding point, and then we became compliant for the boarding system. So you'll find over here that the height of fall is to be measured from top of the bulwark, not from the deck. We might say we calculate freeboard as the load line rules from your deck. 
okay but for pallets is the height of fall so you have to measure the freeboard from top of the bulwark that's what my point here is what is the freeboard the freeboard in this context is the height of fall it should be from top of the bulwark not from the left so all this have to be finer points you must think about and see that the crew have been given the correct procedures to work on using and so that you don't make these kind of non compliances so here is another example where you can improve things you find the measures on the chip you find here the left hand picture so this pad eyes are so close to the edge of the ship to the to the ship side that the securing ropes have nipped on the this uh, whatever this this bar and they going over the side this is a very bad arrangement you will not be able to have a safe securing okay so what you should be doing is shifting these eyes well inside and welding them over here and using only from these kind of eyes similarly this one is possible but it could improve by using shifting these eyes a little further in so you have a nice long reach not so close but usable not too bad safe approach this is a very notorious thing very bad thing to have if you have this on board get it fixed raise the defect tell the superintendent it must be done otherwise pilot boats have known to tip over when they in a inboard gunnel gets trapped underneath this and the wave picks up the boat and one side is trapped other one is free to move and she capsizes or on the converse leak on top she might capsize other way or at least she badly damage the pilot boat gunnel so very hard for the boat to maneuver when that happens the pilot can be in trouble embarking the embarking so 6 meters that's why this is 6 meters that is mostly the, the pilot boat coxswain should be able to manage to maneuver the boat comfortably to pick up or transfer the pilot 6 meters there and then why should a gangway lead off well here's why if it were this is a ship rushing forward the pilot boat approaching from aft for some reason the falls for the gangway broke and when it broke the earlier gangway was like this leading aft right and when it broke it toppled and went this way can you imagine if the gangway was all, all the way around the upper platform was here and it was leading this way and the pilot boat naturally is going to come from aft because that's from where the the water is flowing from ahead and were it to break the whole gangway would have come and bashed onto the pilot boat very very dangerous so this is concludes my presentation and now i will show you one small video to end it here is one rigging done on the cruise ship disney fantasy tough weather Lots of people got just the pilot. Let's see what they're doing. Pilot is a lucky guy. The luck we got him on board. Let's watch it again a little bit. how long the ladder is he what the men are trying to do they are trying to pick up the ladder with hand the ladder is made fast where is it made fast it made is made fast using a thimble eye shackled on to these stanchions their eyes over they shackle it on over here so wrong so wrong and they use they are picking up the ladder with the hand and trying to pass it to the pilot like a man rope so wrong they all wearing fall arrester that looks very nice but this is wrong i can only be charitable to the pilot saying that maybe you were very worried about what will happen to the ship if he didn't board somehow didn't board 
maybe that's what thoughts went into his mind mostly the such of thoughts and he says looks so tempting also just one quick two steps and i'm on board and that'll save everybody a lot of bother this is the thoughts which happen to pass to the pilots or worst cases maybe he himself was not aware of what is the correct way so here definitely the crew is not aware as to how to rig the ladder properly they proceed all wrong they all look good nice and smart in uniform but they have wrong procedures very bad procedures So, thank you for your attention. That concludes my uh, presentation, and we can open up the floor for questions if you have any. You are muted, sir. Magbans. Thank you, thank you, Captain Pandey, for the lovely presentation. Your videos have been very instrumental in learning as well as uh, also scaring us. that this is the kind of uh, attitude that we see farers have for our fellow being who's coming on board to help us out and uh, as we say that the local knowledge or the pilot possess and therefore they are the ones who can take us safely across to the birds and therefore we must ensure that they are safe so that we can be safe to reach our final destination the lovely presentation and we now open the floor to questions i would request uh, the audience to raise the questions in the chat which you can put across to captain pande and captain karanjikar here who would uh, clear your doubts if any on the technical aspects on the presentation that you saw and if you want to learn more on what should be the right way to have a pilot transfer from the boat to the, to the ship or otherwise please uh, put up your questions in the chat and we will get them answered for you well i have i just opened my chat box uh, there is one uh, mr sumit lal chambail he is for a question he says uh, is there a regulation saying that shackles should not be used for rigging pilot ladder well the regulation just says the shackles to be used when you are securing the top of the ladder there is symbolized with which the ladder is in manufactured with when securing those symbolized to the deck some point but when you are rigging a ladder to intermediate length so obviously you cannot secure that ladder through its symbolize you have to secure the ladder at some in between point other than those symbolizes so for those places you cannot you should not use shackles the regulations specify only when you have to secure the ladder from its symbolizes that is designed full length onto the deck that's all they don't tell us how the ladder should be secured to the deck for intermediate lengths what we as pilots are saying you shall definitely not use shackles for securing the ladder at intermediate lengths they very rapidly and 100% they will damage your ladder and as i say ladders can't be repaired on board other than the steps now shackles will damage the rope they will damage the fixtures because they cause strain on the fixtures they dislodge them when rope is damaged or the fixtures are dislodged that ladder is condemned so best practice use a rolling hitch it won't cause such damage so i hope i have answered that question yeah. 
Any other questions, students? Sorry about the interruption. I think that was a technical glitch. I lost connectivity. Mm -hmm. Right. I can see another one in the chat box. Uh, I think everybody can see it. So I just won't repeat it. Since pilot inspection depends a lot on visual inspection, which sometimes depends on individual perception. Would you recommend a time-based renewal of fire ladder to cover for deterioration of the ropes? Uh, it's not a recommendation, sir. It is a requirement. The certificate is valid only for 30 months, maximum, or earlier if the ladder is deteriorated. So just like lifeboat falls, which have to be replaced, the ladder also has to be either replaced or it has to be sent to the maker for retesting and recertifying to extend its beyond its uh, earlier uh, period of use. And when a ladder is first brought to you, brand new, maybe the certificate could be old, but then your SMS, CMS rather, requires that when you first bring it into use, that time you have to mark on the certificate the date from which it was brought into use, means taken out of storage and put it into use. And from that date onwards, 30 months, the clock ticks. And when 30 months are over, regardless, ladder is good or not, you have to replace it. And if you think ladder is good, you can send that to the manufacturer, land it show, get it tested, and suitably at some other port, if it's found good enough for further use, then manufacturer will give a fresh certificate and your owners will arrange to ship it on board at some suitable point. There's one question for Ampa. I'm very, very happy to receive that. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Mishra ji, thank you very much. How Ampa is ensuring the quality of control of pilot ladders made in factories. I mean, it makes me really proud because that, that one thing I had expectation from Ampa. Ampa hasn't reached that <laughs> level of, of exercising quality control on pilot ladders. But what Ampa has suddenly done is uh, we are in close associate Associated with the PTR Holland. And PTR Holland is uh, one of the you know biggest manufacturers of pilot ladder. They have seven manufacturing units in the world. And what we have done with them is we have uh, contributed to their something called as a pilot ladder record book. And the pilot ladder record book, which you will receive now, henceforth for PTR Holland, will also have AMPA logo on it. Because we have corrected that. They have suggested very practical steps of washing pilot ladder because manufacturers won't know what the ship life is all about. You know? So we said how to store the ladder. They said pilot. We, we said how high the pilot should be. You know, you know when they said it should be stored in the store because it's Manila rope, it's wood and things like that. So we said how how well ventilated the store should be. You know, for this kind of things and what kind of a, you know soap should be used for cleaning pilot ladder and things like that. So apart from that, uh, of course, you know, um, India is full of all one practices of pilot ladder. A lot of Alang pilot ladders are being resold. So what we are suggested now to the Paris MOU and Indian MOU also, that if they allow, the manufacturer can have a kind of a barcode on the last spreader where the pilot doesn't have to see because you see, a pilot has to go to the pilot ladder, stand the pilot ladder and look up. And whatever he can see, he has to see whether pilot ladder is new, good, bad, ugly. If you see a dangerous ladder's Facebook page, you will see a pilot ladder which is brand new, has broken into pieces. You know, so pilot, pilot can really make, not, not make out. And no matter what you ask ship staff or do a master pilot exchange 24 hours before and things like that, which regulations are coming up now, it will never happen that the, that the master will not tell what suits his company. I won't say lies. I was a master myself. So, <laughs> what suits his company? You know, so it's an employer employment relationship. You know, you can't blame him either. He can't be the honest to his last, last drop of blood. He's not a soldier. So, having said that, uh, we are looking at the barcode uh, insertion on the last trader where the pilot can come on his mobile phone, scan the barcode, and know the pilot letter is old enough. 
more than 30 months or not, you know. When world is last, you know, kind of was applied and things like that. So, I mean, of course, there is the sky is the limit to do the technology for this. But I am very thankful to your question. I, it gives me a good expectation for manpower. Thanks. Well, I'll take the next question from Shashank Gaurav. He talks about, uh, at the last minute, pilots of pilot coxswains, uh, boat coxswains, asking the ship's crew to uh, adjust the height of the ladder. Can you take it up and we lower it? So that can cause pressures and compromise safety. Well, this is a, <clears throat> a common occurrence. So what you need to do is you have to have your crew ready to do what is required. Because remember, when a, an estimate is made by the pilot of certain height, based on the prevailing swells and weather, uh, and uh, sometimes by the time the pilot actually goes out, the weather can deteriorate or the swell, the wind direction can change. And that alters the conditions under which he feels it is safe to carry out the transfer operation. So the coxswains on the boats are quite well trained. So they can make out whether the ladder is short or long. As early as possible, they will try and tell you. Uh, the only way to do it is to have the crew out there and do exactly what you're told. Uh, it will enhance safety. It doesn't detract from safety. It is safer to use a correctly rigged length of ladder than to have an extra long ladder, like I showed you in my presentation. Um, you're talking about the pilot <laughs> in Belgium regularly. So uh, don't do that. Don't say that in anticipation that, oh, this guy always asks for this and half it on Kana Pattaya. No, no. Do it as you are told and adjust it to the height every time whoever asks for it. Don't. Second guess the pilot. Maybe somebody different would have come and you find that no, no, so every time you come out here, we've had to adjust it by, by half meter. So this time we did it, we, that's why we did it. But if you find that another pilot has come and you find that the ladder is too long or too short and you have trouble. Good question. Should announce that you know anybody who asks questions get, gets five marks more in exams. Ah, so you have can you tell me what is open end and closed end pilot ladder? Is there any regulations regarding pilot ladder should be closed end or it should just a local? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean, open and closed end, but I can do think it, what you mean is that the lower step, the side ropes are joined to one another by some splice or something, or they end up in some sort of a U shaped. Uh, a kind of a loop. So that is not allowed. The ladders which are made as per the ISO standard and then they have to be manufactured and approved by manufacturers also who are approved by the classification society or by the maritime administration. Only then those ladders can be shipped on board. So the Maritime administration certifies the manufacturer. They make uh, surprise inspections. They make batch tests. And then accordingly, the license for the manufacturer for wild ladders is endorsed for further continuance. And when supplies are ordered by the owners, they should be only from such suppliers. So all these questions about close and open end will won't arise. The top end is open, has to be open. And the lower end is also open, but terminated in a particular way. If you look at the design shown in the ISO standard 799-1, that's exactly how the ladders are to be constructed these days. Those That thing about having a small loop at the bottom or splicing the ropes from one side rope, continuing and going to the other side, not allowed. So both ends of the ladder are open. I don't think we have any more questions. Uh, Captain Dagman, would you like to? Oh, I just saw one popping up now from Muhammad oh. Shalimullah. As right. two steps can be replaced. Yeah, I can see that. 
Yeah. For that, the steps are good. See, these steps also, when a ladder is supplied, they are supplied with replacement steps also. That is part and parcel of what makes a ladder. Two replacement steps. From the same manufacturer, they are also certified. So since they are manufactured, made by an approved manufacturer, so as for what they required for friction, whether you have grooves or no grooves or the kind of surface they're made of, all that is already taken care of. Probably what you are seeing, the replacement steps, I don't know what steps, these kind of regulations, whether they were approved steps or not, because definitely if they're just a plain uh, piece of wood, then that is not an approved supplier. They have certain grooves on them or the material itself is quite rough if it's synthetic material. So you should not be facing this dilemma if your ladder is an approved one, means supplied from a manufacturer who's approved by the maritime administration. So these questions you won't face. Most likely your stores, right, they are ladder when you go on board, you should check all these things. If they're not, first thing you should do is raise an inland for approved ladders. Well, as all good things must come to an end. Uh, uh, oh, one more question, sir. Five marks, I think the message is across, Captain Karanjikar. <laughs> 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 That's good. What is the required size of a mangrove of the pallet ladder with the pallet holes before boarding? Pallet holes <laughs> before boarding. Well, it's 28 to 32 millimeters. That's the diameter of the rope. Yeah, 32 max. Yeah. Right. Is there in the specifications? Huh? It's given in Solas, it's given in Solas. And the SOS of Sweet Equipment, Solas and, and uh, yeah, Solas. IMO resolution. Well, that puts me to the next question. Why yes. do the pilots prefer to hold on to the side rope of the ladder instead of the man ropes while climbing? No. Actually, it depends on the kind of boarding craft we have. Like in Pipao, we used to have a tugboat. So that didn't have a very broad deck on which you could stand. So we are basically balancing on the gunnel of the tugboat. Okay. So in that case, we prefer to have a man rope rigged so that uh, you could hold on to the man rope use the mangroves to balance ourselves on the gunnel and then step across. Um, also in rough weather, in smaller boats, uh, you find that mangroves are useful for disembarking. For boarding, they're rarely used. Unless, like I mentioned, in some ports in Pipa, we had a practice of using a tugboat. Later on, we did away with the tugboat and we got our regular pilot boat. And ever since then, we also didn't use mangroves for boarding. But it took a while for us to get habituated by not using man ropes. Initially, we used to vote to the pilot board, but still ask for man ropes. Yes. Uh, it's mostly a nuisance. When you're for boarding, they're flapping around in the wind, they're going across the ladder, and they're going right. in the queue when they're climbing up. They're chafing your neck, they're cutting you here and there. We have to get the ladder and the man rope up. Well, disembarking is a different thing. Sometimes some people just hold on to it and slide down. Uh, some of the more athletic types, that's not a good practice. Usually the man ropes is a dying kind of a uh, piece of equipment. Eventually it'll go away, but some ports, some places where the kind of facilities available, man ropes are required. So that's why it's been retained in Solas. And uh, mostly for disembarking. And only to be rigged. There to be, if you say, pirate says, I want two man ropes. So uh, you rig them up. The lower end should be the same height as the lower step above the water. Rig them up doesn't mean you keep them over the side. Rig them up, check them out, and then bring them back on board, ready to be deployed the moment the pilot asks. So till such time they kept on board. So they don't tangle up, foul up in the bad weather or rolling around or going on pilot. But they are standby. But if last minute if the pilot says, no, I want my rope, then you start running around and playing around. No, not that way. Just to add a bit to it, you know, like the every port has got a different pilot transfer procedure. And rightly so, it has to be that way. So when we question when the AMPA was formed as to why don't we have a code of safe working practices for pilot boarding arrangement. So all ports give us this answer saying that key, 
it cannot be a common code but it has to be a separate you know boarding procedure kind of a sop that has to be drawn up for by each port and that sop would definitely mention the requirements of pilot like man ropes and you know type of pilot ladder use of port use of craft pilot board crew etc more specific so one yeah. last question and i'll finish off is a uh, he still wants to know why the sanjay yadav wants to know why should the tripping line be led forward why not aft well if it is led forward you see when the ship is running when you board a pilot the ship is making headway that means the boat when it comes to the ladder it has to come from aft and drop forward move ahead forward stemming the same direction so that means the first point with the boat is going to come from aft now if it encounters a tripping line which is led aft that is the first thing which might come in foul up with the pilot boat before you can reach the pilot ladder but if that lad that line is led forward so that won't come in the way no so the pilot boat can keep going further up until it the transfer point comes under the ladder and the tripping line because it is leading forward it will lie forward of the pilot boat and won't fall there are a lot of questions coming out of you all are very uh, practical questions you are asking out of practice so uh, Hi, do pilot ladder. Do we, we continue? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm willing to continue. No problem. You tell me when to stop, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, very good. I'm glad you have so many questions. Hi, do the pilot ladder specified by the pilot station? Why do pilots prefer last minute to use gangway at sea? Thank you. How to ensure safety of pilot? If pilot only wants to come on board using gangway and picked up when he is on gangway. General practice in port of Piraus, please. well ashish kumar ja i don't know what thing is uh, yeah in suez also yeah i can tell you the thought process behind these things um is not necessary for the ports to uh, they can they are what we call coastal state they can have their own laws okay these rules we're talking about apply to ships when they want they can ask that you comply with international laws yes they are right that's what you're supposed to do but when local regulations or certain certain procedures apply those also are acceptable and this is what many of the ports are doing uh some may be just practices over time some ports maybe i would say first guess is not a good practice but then only when you go to such a terminal or some place where they're using a gangway the like suez canal also the gangway you will find that you put yourself in the pilot shoes you find maybe that is the best safest instead of pilot ladders like say so i can tell you from my own personal experience right now with very shortly before i was shifted to another terminal i was piloting these large lng carriers at the hedge at the gas terminal so they are very large ships 300 meters plus huge and they got very high freeboards and uh, the see in that area is in a particular direction it and waves a particular direction they come in so 99% of the time you'll find is a good lee the ships can give us so in that case we just rig up a gangway over there and we board by tug not a pilot boat so go by tug go under the gangway gangway is rigged the lower platform of 4 and 1/2 meters above the water and we just step across on the pilot boats on the uh, tugs deck we made some nice safe platform over there from that platform we go on to the lower platform and we on board and is working for the last 15 years perfectly all right perfectly all right the same ship maybe goes to raslafan in the in oman and in uh, qatar so over there they must be having a regular uh, boarding system so if they got all the equipment but in practice of the port i would say the same port now same area for the hedge another terminal over there we use regular combination ladders and pilot ladders 
But at the particular gas terminal, they use gangways. They don't use pilot ladders. So on the face of it, it doesn't sound nice. But when you actually work in the port and feel and see the weather conditions, what they feel, the kind of uh, problems they face with regular pilot ladders, how they use, the kind of boats which they have boarding, all those things weigh heavily on the pilot mind and they find that, well, we will have this is a way in which we will uh, transfer pilots at our port. There is no one size fits all. Remember this. Huh? Regulation is fine, but sometimes every rule, regulation, always is fine, especially ROR, you say, there's a catch all <laughs> rule, and I think in due regard of good seamanship. So that kind of a catch all always is there, these regulations. Hmm. Normally, pilot support. Two more messages. Shashank Gaurav again. Normally, pilot boards on boats and gangways have to exceed the maximum angle in this case due to pilot demand. Example, Suez. Ships have to. Suez and I, I, think, I think this is something you should be raising to your office. So, like we say, no? if you raise the query, so it's off your table and the ball is in the office's court. <laughs> Learn to play some tennis. Huh? Toss the ball back. They say, we have raised this concern. It's not a good practice. Yeah. Uh, and we finally, maybe we can go back to the Swiss and authorities. And uh, what is? You see, it takes time. You know, the, the canal is the same, but the ships have become bigger and bigger and bigger very fast. The wider and bigger, but you find that the gangways are not kept up. To make a gangway which is going to give a suitable angle, the Suez Canal authorities, they have to make a regulation to say that the length of the gangway is such that at whatever normal boarding draft, the angle shall not be more than 45 degrees. The moment they make that, then the whole uh, pressure will come on shipyards and owners, so on, so on, and so forth. It's for Egypt. And for the Suez Canal pilots to also tell that the uh, gangways are too steep. But for you as officers, you can just notice, photograph this, publicize it, send it to the office. Nothing much more we can do. Good question, good point. I'm very, very glad that you're, you were, can you imagine a canal pilot falls and then you have all kinds of problems? Of course, of course. You can't deny the pilot, huh? Go on, go on board. You know, you'll miss no. you'll miss your turn. <laughs> miss your turn. You can just say we, we express our concern. So yeah. Nothing more. You allow it. Good good questions. Right, sir. We didn't get so many questions at the earlier place, Captain Gajanan. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, lots of them. <laughs> huh? oh. But five marks trick is very good. Five, five, five marks, marks, yes. Uh, five, <laughs> marks <from me> <laughs> five marks for me also. <laughs> no, it should be a more interactive session. So, you know, at least not the questions are answered. Yeah. But whatever doubts people, I mean, this is what is happening on board these days. That yes. nobody is, I mean, that mentoring of pilot ladder thing is not happening. Person is not there on board these days. Chief officers are very busy. Masters are very busy. Yeah. So there is no kind of a, you know mentoring happening on pilot ladder. I okay. remember my last grade, I was right then and there taught at the pilot ladder point how to tie a pilot ladder, and she mm -hmm. was standing breathing over my neck. So that hardly happens now. That's good. Good questions are good always. My main thing I would say in concluding is to ensure you've trained your crew so that they are also up to speed with what you've been taught today. So that the length of the ladder is not just randomly left to some person estimate. It's done in a cold, calculated manner. So that if something after you will say, yes, this is how I did it. And then the, later on, they asked for a different length and we also adjusted it. So correctly, even correctly. And then the inspection of the ladder really doesn't take very long, like I showed in the first video. Quick check. And you should know what you're looking for. Slanted steps, loose fixtures. You should be uh, able to... <clears throat> condemn the ladder and get a new one, raise a new indent. 
And if you find you're you losing ladders or condemning ladders too often, then there's something wrong with your rigging. Or like one, some of you said, maybe the maker's quality and all are great. I mean, there is a funda of prime in this, you know, P R I M E on the five on the pilot ladder, which everybody should remember. P stands for proper ladder, you know, R stands for rigged properly, I stands for inspected properly, M stands for man, and E for effective transfer. If you have this prime in place, then everything is in place. Up to yeah. <laughs> Something to remember. I think uh, people have more or less felt the questions have been asked, whatever needs to be asked. Yep. Yeah. Here's an idea what, what's going on in the people's minds of these questions. I now have an idea what the areas of concern. I can see that they're not very really happy with gangways in the Suez Canal and Pira is. Yeah. But I hope you can understand from the pilot's point of view, sometimes it is better to use a gangway than to use a Solar approved ladder. Ricky. Mm. Good, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I must say now the time has come to extend a, a big thank you on behalf of the principal, Captain Manocha of Fosma Maritime Training Institute, Kolkata, the faculty, the staff, and the students, to you two gentlemen who have done a great job to give us a good look at the safety and security of the pilots. It's an important concern. And as I would say that the first three letters of your association aim, let us be our aim to make it safe and secure for the pilots that do a marvelous job of taking us alongside to those wonderful ports, which make us do business as well as the good sightseeing of the ports. Thank you very much once again, sir. And thank you very much uh, to the students who have been participating in this very good interactive session. The questions have been very, very fruitful. And uh, we have the right gentlemen answering the questions for you all. I hope you will carry this on board with you all and make it safe and secure for all the pilots that come in the way of your journey out at sea. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, we will call it with a very happy note and wish this for you and your team, Captain Karanjikar, to make this EMPA a great association for, by, for, by the pilots, for the pilots and of the pilots. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I thank every one of you for this great opportunity to send you Pandey for doing this lecture voluntarily and of course it's a noble cause of saving pilots thank you so much thank you, thank you.